Hi everybody, welcome to story time. I am Miss Olivia and I thought we would kick off today's story time with a good old fashioned round of if you're happy and you know it. Let's do it. All right, so we're just gonna do it a couple times and we're gonna clap. Can you show me your hands? Do you remember how to clap? Okay, let's do it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your smile will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your smile will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <gasps> Good job. So today for story time, I thought we would talk about imagination. I was about to do, if you know SpongeBob SquarePants, I was about to do imagination. Um, and imagination is when you use your mind to play games, to imagine you're in a different world. Like if you're in your backyard, but suddenly you're in the forest and you're looking for snakes, or if you're playing with dinosaurs, or if you're suddenly in a kitchen and you're frying up some eggs. All of that, when you play, that's using your imagination. So I'm gonna read a couple books and sing a couple songs and we're gonna use our imaginations today. Does that sound good? All right, let's do it. The first book I have for you is called Tomorrow Most Likely by Dave Eggers and illustrated by Lane Smith. Ooh, look at that. I love a rainbow. It's a nice rainbow. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a sky, and chances are it will be blue. That's right. That seems right. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a squirrel, and chances are his name is Stu. Have you ever met a squirrel named Stu? If you haven't, that's okay. I haven't. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a meal, and chances are it will be brown, like oatmeal. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a door that leads to another world. <gasps> Where people are found. Oh, there are, there, are, there are their friends. Tomorrow, most likely, there will come a song through a half-open window of a slow-moving car. Tomorrow, most likely, there will be a plane flying high and white and fast and far. Can you see the plane? It's right, it's right here. Wow. Tomorrow, most likely. Do you see something strange on this page? Yeah, there's some kind of snake moving throughout the city. Tomorrow, most likely, something won't rhyme. Huh. Okay, okay. What does this look like to you? Looks like a bird, yeah? It has a beak, but it has the body of a snake, and it has human hands that are pink. Interesting. Do you think that came out of someone's mind using their imagination? Tomorrow, most likely, you'll touch a bright bug, green and red, and looking at you. Tomorrow, most likely, the bug will seem worried. He's missing a friend. His friend's name is Stu. Do you remember who Stu was? The squirrel, that's right. Tomorrow, most likely, you'll smell the good smell of an unseen flower you can't quite name. Tomorrow, most likely, you'll pick up a stone striped like a spider web, or maybe a brain. Tomorrow, most likely, you'll see something strange. You'll hear something odd. You'll touch something gooey. You'll meet Cousin Todd. What is Cousin Todd, what is Cousin Todd walking? That's right, a snail. Cousin Todd. You might ride a whale. You could eat a cloud. You might sing a song, you might write a song and sing it too loud. There are mountains of time and oceans of faces, canyons of color and skies full of places. 
Tomorrow most likely will be a great day because you are in it. And Stu is okay. Very good listening, my friend. So that was tomorrow most likely. And now we're gonna stand up and sing a couple of songs. So can you stand up with me? All right. Okay. Are y'all standing up with me? Awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend to be toasts and a toaster. And I know that sounds a little weird, but it's one of my favorite songs and I think you're gonna like it. So when we do this, we're gonna get down low and then when I yell pop, you're gonna pop up. Okay, ready? Okay. So pretend you're a toaster. <laughs> pretend you're a toast in a toaster. Ready? I'm a toast in the toaster. I'm getting very hot. Tick tock, tick tock. Watch me pop. Good job. Okay, ready? Let's do it again. I'm a toast in the toaster. I'm getting very hot. Tick tock, tick tock. Watch me pop. <laughs> nice. Let's do it again. All right. Are you feeling getting hot because you're a toast in a toaster? Do you feel it? Awesome, okay. I'm a toast in the toaster. I'm getting very hot. Tick tock, tick tock, watch me <gasps> pop. <laughs> Good job. Okay, can you get even lower? I can get pretty low, ready. I am a toast in the toaster. I'm getting very hot. Tick tock, tick tock, watch me Good job. All right. All right. Now we're going to pretend to be inside of an elevator. And if you've been to the library, then you know, or maybe have seen or been inside our elevator. Or if you're like me and you live in an apartment building, you've been in an elevator to go to your apartment or maybe in a store or wherever. But we're going to pretend to be in an elevator right now. And the first thing we're going to do is march. And then we're going to take the elevator up and then we're going to take the elevator down. And then we're going to keep going. So can you march with me? Oh, the city is great. Oh, the city is grand. There's a whole lot of people on a little bit of land and we live way up. Could you up on the 42nd floor? And this is what happens when we walk out the door. Can you pretend to walk out a door? You ready? We take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. We take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. We take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. And we turn up, round. Good job. Let's, let's just do the elevator part again, Ronnie. We take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. We take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. Take the elevator up. We take the elevator down. And we turn up, round. Nice job. Okay, let's read our last book of story time. Let's do it. That was fun, right? I love a good toast in the toaster. It's one of my favorites. Next, we're gonna read What If by Samantha Berger and illustrated by Mike Curato. And I love this book. It's one of my favorites. So it's called What If. And these are the end papers, which are the beginnings of the book. And there's our main character sitting in the window. What if? With a pencil and paper, I write and draw art to create many stories that come from my heart. So pay attention. So there's a unicorn or like a Pegasus type creature. There's a snake, a rocket ship, and then they're drawing themselves. And there's a rainbow. <laughs> But what if that pencil one day disappeared? I'd fold up the paper till stories appeared. So what did they fold up? They felt they folded up a unicorn, another unicorn. And what if that paper was no longer there? I'd chisel the paper and then carve out the chair. So what did they create? They created an airplane out of a chair and a table. That's so great. And what if there wasn't a chair here at all? I'd chip and peel the paint at the paint on the wall. And look what they created. They created a sky. And what if there wasn't a wall anymore? 
I might build a story from the boards on the floor. What did they build from the boards on the floor? <gasps> a rocket ship. A rocket ship! Without any floor, I could still use the land and sketch out a tail in the dirt in my hand. What did they... Yeah! A whole solar system out of dirt. Pretty cool. I could still shape the leaves into a dragon. I could still sculpt the snow. I could still plant the flowers and make kingdoms grow. That's right, that's a sand castle. Without any land, I could still use the light, invent shadow stories, the sun would ignite. It's pretty creative. If there was no light, I would still use my voice to sing out my stories, to chant and rejoice. There's a bird, some music. I'd still have my body to twist and to bend, to dance out my stories, beginning to end. Do you love to dance? I love to dance. I'm very bad at it, but I love it. If I had nothing but still had my mind, Oh my goodness. There'd always be stories to seek and to find. Look at how cool this is. Do you remember on the first page where I said pay attention to what they were drawing? Yeah. They drew a unicorn and a bird and a dragon and the solar system and flowers and a rainbow. It's pretty cool. If I know nothing but one bit of fate. As long as I live, I will always create. Do you see anything in their room that you, that you might have at home or something that you like to play with at the library? There's some Legos. There's a guitar. There's some stuffed animals. And of course, a desk and a pencil. As long as I live, I will always create. What's flying out of their window? A unicorn Pegasus awesome drawing that they drew. <laughs> Very cool. The end. Wasn't that really cool? It's one of my favorites. All right. It was very nice to talk all about imagination, to sing some songs, to read some stories together. And I hope to see you very soon. And I hope um, that you sign up for summer reading at the end of the week. All of, if you watch our story times on our YouTube, all of those hours that you watch count towards summer reading. So you and your family can count those hours. And don't forget about a thousand books before kindergarten. Because when we reopen, we want to give out those prizes like... So we just want to give them out. So make sure you're counting all the books that you read. If you haven't signed up yet, you can check out our website or you can email us and we'll let you know what you can do. Okay? Bye.